Okay, let's talk about adding these two polynomials. So, um, you know, this is a pretty basic algebra that we're talking about here, uh, but it's only basic for those of you who've actually taken algebra and, and, you know, mastered it and learned it and everything else. And some of you might be watching this video as a quick review, but others of you might be just learning this for the first time. So it's not so basic, right? You know, you're learning this, anything you learn for the first time, you know, uh, there's new concepts involved. So whether you're reviewing this or learning uh, about adding polynomials for the first time, hopefully this video is going to emphasize some really important uh, points. So we're going to talk about a few things here in this video um, uh, that are relevant to adding polynomials. And we're going to give a little definition about what a polynomial is because not everything in math is a polynomial, okay? So hopefully you'll stick around for a few minutes and master the concept of adding polynomials. But before we get going, let me go ahead and first uh, introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I'd like to believe is one of the uh, strongest math help programs out there. I'm gonna leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video, but it consists of several online full complete courses, complete full math instruction, and I literally solve thousands of videos, video-based solutions. There's all kinds of good stuff, uh, um, ancillary things that are part of my programs, uh, notes, quizzes, et cetera, et cetera. So if you uh, need to take a full math course or you need uh, help with your current course, you might wanna check out that again, you can find the link to that in the description of this video. Now, if you're new to my channel, okay, I just have to tell you as a math teacher of several years, the number one indicator that I look for, okay, when I'm talking to a, a math student, right, and I wanna size up very quickly, hey, uh, is this student gonna be successful or not? If I look at your notes, I can tell almost 90% confidence uh, whether you're going to be doing well or not okay it's just a trend that I've seen over the years those students that have the best math notes generally have the best math grades and the reverse is true those students who have like scribbly scratchy or no math notes are not <laughs> more 90 percent of the time don't do well you have to take uh, notes okay it's one of the top skills that you need top academic skills you need in mathematics okay I actually have multiple videos on note-taking in my uh, channel. But um, if your notes are less than desirable at this point, you know, hey, now's a good time to start getting better at note-taking, okay? Um, good way to uh, take notes is to model what your teacher's doing. But in the meantime, if you're in the middle of your class and you don't have good notes, you need good notes to study from. So I offer notes. Um, I'm going to leave a link to those in the description of this video. They would be pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. So uh, you need comprehensive good math notes to study from. That's really important, but you have to take your, you have to take notes as well, okay? You just got to do that. All right, so enough of all of that, and let's get into polynomials, okay? So obviously we wanna add polynomials. So uh, of course, these two guys right here would be polynomials. Now what makes a polynomial a polynomial? Okay, well, let's talk about that real quick. So a couple things here. It's important that you understand this now because later in more advanced mathematics, uh, there's, there's things that, um, uh, you know, are not polynomials, all right? And let's just make sure you understand. Let's go, let's put this here. Let's say 3x to the seventh power, okay? This is a polynomial, okay? It is a polynomial. Right now, what makes it a polynomial? Well, I'm gonna explain that. So typically, okay, a polynomial will have a variable, like so, like an X or a Y. It can have two things like X, Z, all right? Like a four X, Z. So it's not just limited to one variable. It can have multiple little variables, okay? And the number, all right? So here we got a variable, variable or variables. And then we have some sort of number in front of that variable, okay? Now that number could be, uh, it could be a whole number like three. It could be a decimal. It could be like negative 0 0.06, okay? So as long as it's what we call like a real number, now anything on the number line, a fraction, a negative decimal, so here's zero, here's one, anything you like, negative one, anything on the number line could be 
what we call the coefficient, all right? That's the number in front of the variable, okay? So most of you out there, you're like, okay, yeah, that makes sense, all right? This is, in some of the words I could have, negative 0.06 x, y to the fifth, okay? That is a polynomial, all right? So this guy here, negative 0.06 is on my number line, and I have uh, x, these are variables. Now, here is the big, what I think is the big thing that um, students get confused about whether something's a polynomial or not. Okay, so this part, these parts are generally okay. It's this part, okay, this part. And that part is the exponent. Now, this is where we have some restrictions, okay? The exponent, okay, uh, can be 0, 1, 2. It's basically going to be the positive integers, 3, 4, etc. okay, and 0, all right? Because x to the 0 power, if you just don't know here, is 1. Don't worry about the 0 too much. You don't really see that but you need, you need to know it could be zero, right? But like 4xz, this is 4x to the first, z to the first, or negative 0.06, that's x to the first, y to the fifth, okay? So these are what we call the positive integer values here, okay? Uh, right here, well, including zero, okay? So this is really, really important. All right now, let's look at some examples of something that could uh, look like a polynomial, but it isn't, okay? So, so of course, we have 3x to the 7th, okay? No problem. That is a polynomial because, you know, we have a real number in front of a variable to a certain power. But how about this? 3x to um, the negative 7, okay? Now, this is not a polynomial, okay? It's not a polynomial because this is negative. This is the expression 3x to the seventh this way, okay? This is something different, okay? Now, if we have 3x to the point 0.2, okay, not a polynomial. So we have to be very um, specific with that term, what a polynomial is. Now, uh, and this is kind of like, you know, if you're learning about adding polynomials, then, you know, you need to know about this other stuff as well. So this is the exponent, okay? So the exponent could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. okay? All right, now let's talk about this whole thing here. So again, this number, this, the number here is called the coefficient, okay? So then we got a variable or variables, and then we have the exponent. And this whole thing, 3x to the 7th, for example, we consider this a term, okay? So this is a one-term polynomial, one-term polynomial. We actually have a special name for it called a mon monomial, monomial, okay? Now, we can take and make all kinds of bigger polynomials by just adding a bunch of terms. So I got a one-term monomial. Let's add another one to it. Let's say 3x to the seventh plus, I don't know, 2x to the fifth. Okay, so this is a term and this is a term. I add them together or subtract them together. Guess what? I have a two-term two-term polynomial now, and we have a special name for this called a binomial. Binomial. And what happens if I have a three-term polynomial, okay? Now, here I have a number, okay? But this is really an x to the zero power. This is x to the first, okay? So in fact, the, a number by itself, okay, is considered a term. So this is a three-term polynomial. We got a special name for it called a trinomial, okay? So, all these different polynomials, as a matter of fact, if I add another term to a trinomial and have like a five or six, seven, eight term polynomial, we just call those polynomials. Because you've got to understand the basic building blocks of, of uh, polynomials. One, you've got to understand what they are, okay? Um, because later down in mathematics, we have special theorems and properties specifically only to polynomials. But a lot of math students will be like, oh, yeah, that looks like a polynomial. No, it's easy to get fooled. Some things look like a polynomial, but they're not polynomials. Okay. Now, um, if you knew this, that's great. Now this just got reinforced. If you didn't know this, now you know it, and you're going to be that much stronger of a math student. 
All right, so now let's get to the problem. Okay, so adding polynomials is very simple, okay? What we're gonna be doing, we talked about terms, right? This is a term, that's a term, that's a term, and this is a three-term polynomial, and we're gonna be adding it to a, uh, this is a term, and this is a term. So this is a three-term polynomial, we're gonna add it to a two-term polynomial, okay? So remember, we're talking about terms. This is a term, 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 right? So you gotta get the idea, right? Now, what we're gonna do, okay, is we need to look for things called like terms, okay, like terms. So we already talked about what a term is. Now I gotta throw into this mix, what's a like term? Hmm, what's a like term? Well, a like term is a, a terms, okay, uh, obviously we're talking about polynomials that have the exact, exact variable uh, variables and powers. So for example, uh, if I have 4xy, okay, and I have a 6xy, these are like terms because these parts are exactly the same. I mean, I mean, they got to be 100% exactly the same. Same variables, same powers. But let's just kind of mess with this for a second. What if I put a little 2 there, okay? Now, are these like terms? No, they're not, okay? Because I have an xy squared, this is xy. So I'm like, oh, well, they're close, but close doesn't count it, okay? As soon as I make this a squared, now they become like, okay? So you can see if I made this a squared here and a squared there, doesn't make a difference. These guys have to be exactly, precisely, 100% identical, okay? Now, if those are identical, you got terms with identical variables and powers, and then those would be considered like terms, okay? So the whole deal, okay, when you're adding polynomials is to identify uh, like terms, okay? So let's go ahead and start. We'll start with this first term right here, 3yx, uh, 3, 3y squared uh, times x, okay? I'm looking for any of the terms that might have this part to it, okay? So I'm just scanning over here. That's an X and a Y. Although this has X and a Y, this has X and Y. That's not exactly alike. I'm like, oh, hey, I got one right here. Look at that. Y squared X is exactly like this one. So these are like terms. So meaning that I can add these up. All right. Now, how do I add these up? I just add the coefficients. All right. I got three Y squared X here and I got two Y squared X. So guess what? I actually have five Y squared X x okay it's as simple as that okay but we can't forget about the rest of this polynomial here that's minus 8xy all right and we're going to be adding it to this guy over here 10xy minus y now when you get better at this you'll better just take one line one step and you'll find the like terms and kind of combine them all up this is what, we're, what we talk about, combining like terms. I'm just kind of breaking this out a little bit, uh, you know, uh, in a few other steps so we can kind of practice this. So let's, uh, we already dealt with the, the y squared x's. Let's talk about the xy's. Let's see if there's any more of those. So I got xy and I'm scanning. Oh, I got xy over here. So because we're talking about addition, for addition of polynomials, when you, we have subtraction problems, it's a little bit different. But addition of polynomials, you can kind of just drop the brackets here, the grouping symbols, because it's just like adding numbers. Order doesn't make a difference. 1 plus 7 plus 3 is the same thing as 7 plus 3 plus 1. So no need to uh, keep the grouping symbols, the parentheses, in place. When we're talking about subtracting polynomials, that's a different deal. Okay, so just for addition, focus on adding polynomials. So here, these are like terms, so I can add the negative 8 and the 10. So negative 8 plus 10 is 2, right? So we have our 5y squared x, and now this term and this term uh, becomes positive 2xy, and then we have this little negative y there, okay? And obviously there's no more uh, terms, so this is our final answer, okay? So we just added two polynomials, but you know, the point of this video was not to just add the polynomials. Obviously, I wanted to teach you how to do the problem. 
but it was really to in, uh, uh, really emphasize and reinforce or teach you for the first time these concepts. What is a polynomial? Okay. What is a coefficient? What's the variable? What's the exponents? You know, all these different things. What are like terms, etc. Okay. Now, again, um, when it comes to polynomials, adding and subtracting polynomials are almost identical. However, if this was a subtraction situation, all right, if we're subtracting here, what you have to do, okay, just in case you don't, I'm going to do a video on subtracting polynomials, but if, uh, okay, we just did an addition problem, but if this was a subtraction problem, you'd actually, actually have to distribute this negative sign within the parentheses over here, okay? And then when you do that, then you can add up uh, all the like terms, right? Now, let's go and wrap up this video. None of this is going to stick unless you practice it. So if you're studying, you know, polynomials, make sure you do your homework or exercises so this sticks. You know, watching these videos are, uh, you know, are designed to be helpful, but they're not a substitute for learning, okay? The only way you're going to get good at this stuff and it retains your long-term memory is by practicing. All right, so if you like this video, I certainly would consider you smashing a like button. If you um, are not a subscriber, I certainly you hope you will consider becoming a subscriber. I literally have hundreds and hundreds of uh, math videos if you like my teaching style on my YouTube channel and I'm posting stuff literally all the time. Okay, new stuff from middle school math to all the way up to calculus. Okay, so wherever you're at, I'm uh, pretty sure I might be able to help you out in your mathematics adventures. But with that being said, I definitely appreciate your time and have a great day.